you swing the arms, upper body here, turning, turning, you cannot change the tempo at all. Mm. Big motion. Mm. 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 Essentially, to move the end of the rope around your body nicely. In no matter what. But oftentimes, you, you, you try to do certain body motion. So your, your focus is on the body motion, but not. The focus should be uh, on the motion of the end of the rope. And if it, uh, I put it in a simple motion here. Let's say my goal is to move the end of the rope around my body. Then you can perhaps imagine something like this. Okay. So the goal is to move the, the end of the rope around your body with a large arc. It's as simple as that. Don't try to manipulate it. Just let it go around your body. around your body, around your body. And then when you let the rope go around your body, what happens is at the end, the rope will wrap around your body like this. Can you do a couple swings going that way? So swing, let it go around your body. In a simple rope motion around your body and let the end of the rope go around your body. You're not forcing the rope motion with your arms. Should the tip of the rope brush the ground or just, no, no, no. okay. But this is a bit shorter than uh, your long, long clubs. So uh, you don't need to hit the ground. If, you, if the rope hits the ground, that means your swing plane is too steep, okay? Mm -hmm. So again, the goal is to move the end of the rope. So you have to feel the motion of the end of the rope. This is the most important one. Let it go around your body, make big arc around your body. And you have to pay attention to how the end of the rope is moving. But if you uh, move your arms in certain ways, it goes flat, and it is your back, and then go to the neck here. So again, the goal is to move the end of the rope around your body as large as possible here. So what you can practice is you can change the, flat, uh, the slope a little bit. You can go quite flat. Swing. Yeah, that's a great way to start it. And gradually lower this down, a bit more down here. Dr. Kwan, we've gotten some comments before when people have done this on their own, that they, they and I've seen them do it where the rope really slaps some people very, very hard at the, at, on the back. It's what because, is the, what are they doing wrong? They don't use the arms and the wrist at the end. So the whole body is like a- So show me kind of the wrong way that, that when it, yeah, 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 yeah. But toward the end, you will use you will use your arms and your wrist. So then, it'll nicely go around your body like this. And soft, yeah. Swing, swing, swing. This thing. Many, many times when you start, if you're hitting yourself too hard, which I did, we all did. You're not doing it right. But as you work with it. He's talking about acceleration and then an active deceleration. When you start decelling better, it doesn't slap you so hard. And then also, the goal is to bring, make this uh, arc large here so that it goes all the way here instead of ending up somewhere on your back. If you uh, stop moving this, then it will hit your back here. Let it go all the way. Keep a continuous shoulder turn here so that the end of the rope goes all the way here. Both ways. Here, here, swing, here, swing here. And then don't fight, just, just work with the rope. And how much width should your arms have when you do this? Like your arms look kind of soft, like how, how much straightness should you uh, have? You don't have, have to keep it straight. Okay. A straight arm is also not natural. Okay. So it will leave the uh, elbow motion. Okay. But if you have too much elbow motion, then it uh, makes uh, the motion more complex. So uh, a little bit of uh, elbow motion, but let it go. And the, here, your goal is not to swing it really hard, but rather just to keep fast enough speed so that the rope does not fall and the, the wrap around your body, okay? Let's do it. And the, if your motion is not good, then I'll put you here under the sun. <laughs> Throwing the rope outward, then automatically it goes around your body. But if you, in your intention, you try to pull it down, then you stop somewhere. 
stop and then try to pull it down. That's why you have a rushed transition to Tao swing. So throw this way, let it go around the body, and then throw this way, throw this way, throw this way, throw this way. As you throw, you will be able to use the legs better at the right time. In order to uh, push and throw, you have to push the ground and then let it go. But if you try to pull quickly, then your body moves early, too early, too early, open the body early, and then try to pull, then the right leg, or the leg cannot push the ground that way. So always have the feel of throwing outward, throwing outward you know, throwing outward enough, throwing outward, then you have enough transition time. Would you make this part of the, your 15 minute daily routine, the rope work? Yes. Yeah. This is, this is really, the left hip will move forward more, okay? And then when you're turning this way, then again, left leg su uh, supports your body, and then the right hip is moving forward more, then the left hip moving backward. With that, you are standing on the left side. Stand on the right side, stand on the left side, stand on the right side, stand on the left side here. Is that all? When you do this, you still have a lot of weight on this side. So you cannot do this. Really support this way. And then turn the body around the right hip here. Okay? On this side, support the, the weight with the left. And then turn around about this axis here. Dr. Korn, show me the reach out, how so that goes with That's why this. you need to shift first and then reach out. Shift and push and reach out. Shift and push and reach out. This shift motion will give you good body position with which you can push the ground well. So shift first here, and by pushing and then reaching out. Shift here, pushing and reaching out. Mm, here. Mm, here. Mm, here. Mm. And then when you do this continuously, you know, like this, swing, 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 swing. Now, if you are starting the whole thing with the body, then you can change the tempo easily. So look at this. Mm. Big motion. Mm. 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 <laughs> you can change the tempo the way you would because you're throwing the tempo with the leg, actually. If you swing the arms, upper body here, turning, turning, you cannot change the tempo at all. Reach out, reach out. Here you go. Hold this one in your other hand and just just let that film. It's already started, right? Okay, yeah, sorry, sorry. So Dr. Kwan, you were saying that here I get here on this foot too early and then I'm that way. Mm. So you say I'm gonna what do I need to do? Stay on this one longer. So try not to shift too much. All you need is a slight recentering instead of shifting a lot. Okay. That looks better. Yeah. So that shift back or the recentering has come from uh, initial shift away and just returning to uh, your uh, initial position. The, so the recentering comes from I shift this way, and then that pushes me back, and then back this yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But you tend to uh, shift too much. So the recentering is like more automatic because I did this. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I got you. Okay, so shift away and stay on this side longer. Yeah, that way. All right, so this was the next day after Dr. Kwan and I worked together and we had the Be Better Golf Schools. We <coughs> went down to... Off the bunker? Yeah, we went down to McKinney, Texas to play TPC Craig Ranch. This was like two days after the PGA Tour had finished playing here. And I had... Uh, that was really good. That was the first hole. I had my best driving day ever. So I've always suffered with this kind of lunge to the lead side. And in trying to do the step drills, I had over aggressively shifted 
to the lead side, whereas it was more of like an automatic recentering, nothing like uh, overly aggressively lunging. So it had really helped me to keep my ball like in a lot more control, just be more centered. That was the second yeah, hole. That's how it bounced. This is the third hole. So this one is a really cool hole because this is, if you go, like it's got that uh, creek going down the left side. So nobody really tries to drive that. So you just try to hit it straight down the left-hand side. It's kind of a tough drive here. So I wanted to just do what Lee had said with this, open my stance and just hit a fade off the open stance. So that was really good. And after I hit that shot, I was like, wow, I can just do anything I want today with drivers. So it was a really fun feeling. All right, so here you can see, see I had my stance kind of open to hit a fade. And then I changed my mind and decided to hit a draw and I hit a really good one. So that was a lot of fun. So thanks to Wayne who had us out there and thanks to everybody who came to our last Be Better Golf School. We're gonna be doing another one with Dr. Kwan probably in September and maybe at the Olympic Club in San Francisco, it's looking like. If you're interested in that, email me, contactbebettergolf at gmail.com or you can always stay updated on what's going on at bebettergolf.net slash school. We have more videos coming out soon. Talk to you soon, bye. Oh, that's good. A little left. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kicked on. Is that a nine iron? That's a nine. Yeah. It is a really cool hole. So Mike hit it to four feet. I hit it just past pin high. I'm probably 18 feet. And our host, Wayne, hit it to Gosh, I don't know. He looks like he's about 16 feet. It's a great shot in here. Th this, I think, is going to try to be the next 16th at Waste Management.